If I had to pick one thing, it's the logistics to make a trip successful. It takes a lot of effort to run a good trip. It takes a lot of effort from the parents, particularly the fathers that are going to come on the trip, the scouts making sure that they're ready and prepared and the drill throughs and the, making sure that they're uh, safety trained as far as their canoe trips and youth protection. So the logistics of planning a trip I think are some of the more challenging, uh, but some of the benefits is that you have boys out in an environment where they can learn and grow and they can mature right in front of your eyes. There were so many adventures in scouting. I think all of them helped to build our character, helped to build the way we are, helped to build our experiences, helped us to become better people. Uh, think some of those trips out with the scouts when they were having some challenges and we kind of all step in to help them. Um, seeing myself step in with other adults and try and get these boys to be more self-confident and become better citizens, become more givers than takers out of our community. I think that's probably the joys that I received. That's personally what I found most fulfilling, is that we saw young boys grow up into be young men and protective members of our society. I miss the adventures. I do not miss the rain. I do not miss being cold at night. Um, some of the foods, I think, were a challenge, but we also had some great meals. So there were some good things. There were some things that were maybe not so much, but um, if I miss something in scouting, it is that I miss that camaraderie at the campfire at night. The boys telling their stories, saying what they felt they um, learned that day, which was one of our traditions. At the end of the night, when we'd sit around the campfire, we'd say, hey, what are you proud of today? And most of them were so proud that they accomplished so much during that day. Many of them didn't think they could hike 10 miles, 20 miles, 50 miles, or even 95 miles that we didn't film on. So seeing them come together, um, uh, face adversity, and come out you know, healthy and younger men, that's the parts that I miss. You'll never find a better program to teach a young man leadership skills. Rich Brown served as Scoutmaster from 2000 to 2006. He introduced Troop 32 to new high adventure trips, including Sabatis in the Adirondacks, as well as trips to the Yukon in Alaska. To this day, former scouts from Rich's era say if they went on a camping trip, they would want Rich to come along for the adventure. I love being in the outdoors. Uh, I've had more scouts come up to me and say, Listen, Mr. Brown, you know, why can't we just let's get together and let's just go out and hike? Uh, interesting enough, um, uh, Bob Abel was a good friend of mine. Uh, was involved in Little League with me. And uh, one day he said, um, he's bringing his son Tommy, he says, uh, I'm bringing Tommy over to uh, the scout troop. I'm thinking about signing him up. Uh, what do you think the, your boys would like it, both Matthew and Zachary? Uh, and I said, yeah. I said, I think that's a great idea. I grew up in New Hampshire and literally you couldn't see your neighbors. I, was, I lived in the woods. Uh, so I was very comfortable with being out in the woods and just playing in the woods. That was my backyard. I had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of acres just to walk around in and uh, never thought about getting lost because I, I had this, you know, you have this innate sense about direction and where you are and it just, uh, when you live in the woods, it's just natural to, to I guess, uh, develop those skills. You know, Bob was just such a huge, huge help. You know? And in the very beginning, you know, Bob and I were really taking on this challenge and uh, so everybody sort of backed away that you know, they wanted to see which way I was going to take the troop and, and what I was going to do with it. So, and, and I don't know a problem. In fact, that was the best thing that could have happened is that they just, you know, let me do what I wanted to do with the troop. It turns out that to successfully run a troop, uh, it's a full-time job, a full-time job. Um, because as a scoutmaster, you're responsible for these these young boys, these young men that um, uh, are putting their life in your hands. So you you better darn well uh, know how to take care of uh, first aid things out in the uh, out in the field. I made sure all of our adult leaders went through a wilderness first aid program uh, to really understand the uh, cataclysmic failures. 
uh, that can happen while you're out on, on the trail and you're days away from help. I mean, we were, when we were on the Yukon River, we were four days away from help at the very least. Uh, so we need to make sure that, that we could address significant first aid issues. And there is danger in scouting. There always has been. Uh, the adults are there to minimize the danger, not remove it. You have to teach the boys how to manage the program. I mean, that's what it's all about. It's all about uh, educating them, uh, letting them be, resp be responsible for management uh, of different things. That's why we had uh, different positions within the troop. If you give these young men an opportunity to be creative away from devices, they can do it, and they will do it. And it was a great thing to see. Um, independence, uh, resilience, uh, self-sufficiency, all right, uh, a moral code, all right, a way of life, a way of living. I mean, that's what scouting is all about. I mean, those are the those are the things. Every scout that came to uh, through Troop Thirty Two was ahead of their peers from a self-sufficiency perspective. They could cook, they could clean, they could they could analyze risk, which is something that that a teenager has no concept of. You need to analyze the risk. You need to analyze, um, you know, the skill set of the scouts you're with and the adults you're with, by the way, as well. Not only the scouts, but the adults. You know, you need to You need to analyze uh, the environment. You know, um, are we crossing streams? Is the water high? Is it rained? Are the roots wet? Are the rocks wet? I mean, there's all of these environmental risks. Wildlife. I mean, we ran into a number of bears when we were out on these trips, and uh, we knew how to deal with them. As part of what we taught uh, as scouts is, is the risk, you know, these are the issues, and this is how to deal with them, all right? So that you've got some thought process. You've already had time to think about this once. So now we can move ahead, and, and you run into the situation, bam. All right, you know, solve it. Now, not all situations are going to be covered, so, but at least you have a process to do the analysis. We, we had a lot of Eagle Scouts, and, uh, but we also had a lot of Scouts that just wanted to go camping and just wanted to go hiking. You know what? And that's what scouting is all about. All right? We're not cookie cutters. Not everybody's an Eagle Scout. Not everybody wants to be an Eagle Scout. Right? Um, there's, there was a lot of Scouts that weren't Eagles that were much better at camping and, and dealing with the outdoor stuff. You know? They enjoyed that. And, and they did that, and, and, and we let them do those things that made them happy and made them successful. Uh, and that's really, you know, that's what scouting is all about, is building confidence. If you treat, it doesn't matter how old or how young you are, if you treat people with respect, all right, they accept that, and they thrive off of it, and you get it back, all right? And that's part of the scout motto, you know, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, be cheerful, be brave, clean, reverend, all right? Those are all those all those great things um, are there, you know. And we would say at the beginning of every meeting, and but we would live it too. I mean, that's that's the thing. We would live it, and we wouldn't tolerate um, uh, nonconformity from these basic rules. The biggest contribution I think uh, that that we made uh, was consistency consistency with the uh, with the scouts uh, consistency with the adults consistency with um, with the council uh, we really we really um, treated everybody as an individual uh, communicated communicated at that individual level understanding what they wanted to get out of scouting uh, and uh, provide the training especially for the older adults uh, and get them involved so they understood, you know, where we wanted to take the troop, you know, what direction we wanted to take the troop. And, and in doing that, uh, what happened is we started getting scouts from other towns. All right? We built this program that, um, that word got out that we were a, a, a I don't want to say a high-end troop, but we were a quality troop. We challenged the, uh, the scouts. That's what they enjoyed. They enjoyed being challenged. Um, we had a lot of road programs that we, we developed, but we developed it so that they understood the scouting skills uh, and how they could use those not just to tie knots, but why you tie knots. And then we would take that 
out into the field. And then we would take that to competitions. And it got to the point where, um, you know, we were very successful at these camperies uh, and uh, uh, had a, a good run of, of winning uh, the camperies that we went to. And, and, and that had to do with the, the adults that were involved. Uh, you know, I had, a, I had a good core group of adults behind me. Uh, that had everybody had different sets of, of scouting skills. And it created this uh, this scouting synergy within the troop uh, that allowed us to to not only teach but live. You know the scouting, the motto, the oath, uh, and we really pushed that. You know, I mean that's I think that's the one thing that Dick Walbrock uh, really brought to the program was this is the way a scout lives. All right, and this is the way our troop is going to live. You know, so um, you know he was my mentor. Gilbert E. Legg, better known as Gil, served as scoutmaster of Wachung's Troop Thirty Two from 1966 to 1973. Before leading Troop Thirty Two, he served as scoutmaster for Troop Two out of Maplewood, New Jersey. His enthusiasm for scouting brought him back to Troop 32 in the 1980s to serve as assistant scoutmaster for more than 10 years during Richard Welbrock's time as scoutmaster. Gill was also an active member of the Watchung Rescue Squad and, along with his wife Betty, a co-founder of Hammer and Help in 1972. Hammer and Help was an organization run out of Wilson Memorial Church that provided emergency aid to others in need. His dedication to Wachung Borough earned him Wachung Optimist Citizen of the Year in 1979. I started scouting in 1939, and uh, it was the World War II who was coming up. I became senior patrol leader, and I stayed, I was senior patrol leader through, I think, four different scoutmasters until I until I enlisted in the Navy, really. And we didn't really have a good, uh, a good setup for going for merit badges, so I only got the first class. But I can basically ram the troop for before and after I was in the Navy. Bob Paul was a scoutmaster, and, and we both joined at that same time. I was his assistant until he moved out of town, and I became scoutmaster. Scoutmasters always did what I did. I've had the kids come up, come to the house, and they have to get their tennis foot through me. One of the, one of the things that we, we instituted in the troop was discipline. Anybody who was really obstructionist or difficult in the troop wouldn't behave. We would send them home, send them to my assistant scoutmasters and take him home, and he wouldn't be allowed back, allowed back in the troop unless his father came home. This is a case that I remember that uh, was very important to me, that the kids learn discipline and, and to uh, support each other. They learn to grow, they grow up, learn to take responsibility. When they get, when they get into the leadership, uh, that's when they uh, they uh, they grow up, begin to find out what what what. Scouting is outing. I've felt, and that I tried to uh, try to have one outside activity every every month. For instance, one couple of our Fathers were airline pilots. We got to go. We, we got an opportunity to take the troop down to the North Airport and to go in some of the hair, hangars uh, and see what was going on in there, the, the repairing of the planes and so forth. Uh, that's the kind of things we would do. Well, not being able to get out and be with the boys and go on the trips that they did, that we did, I should say. It was always something to look forward to.
we had a hurricane come through. I think it was Bob, Hurricane Bob, came through and flattened a number of, number of the campsites. Nobody got hurt, but, you know, kind of wrecked the campsites. Fortunately, ours stayed up pretty good because I, I got the kids to tie all the tents together from one tent to the other. So when the, when the blast came in, the, the, the wind came in, our stuff stayed up. And everyone ate a lot, everybody else was flat. My advice has always been, remember the motto, be prepared. And how do you prepare yourself? It's really a function of time management and setting goals. I've told all my scouts always, do not look at the eagle as some impossible dream. It's achievable. Do it step by step by step. Write a contract for yourself as to each rank, when it's going to get done. And don't go to your mother or your father and say, Mom, I'm not doing very well. Look to yourself. None of these steps are difficult. They're all relatively easy. It's a function of time. It's a function of dedication. And I guide some of my scouts to take on responsibilities that every day move them toward that goal. For example, I suggest roll out of bed, do 10 push-ups, 10 sit-ups, 10 leg lifts, and do that every day. You may not like it, but you got something done and you set a pattern for achievement. I even tell them to make their beds. Most of my scouts over 40 years of being with Troop 32, really, don't make their beds. I'd be embarrassed, but I tell them, roll out of the bed, make your bed. It's something you don't like, but it's, once again, a step along the way to the goal of being an eagle. And believe it or not, your mother would be shocked. You did a good turn daily, every day of your life. That's one of the things I tell my scouts. The other thing I tell my scouts is, if you see somebody with capacity to be an eagle, but they're drifting, help them along the way. You'll make a friend, and it'll push you to a better goal. Actually, I miss quite a bit about scouting, and they fall into a process, and they fall into a relationship. I enjoyed, from a process standpoint, of working with scouts, boys, young men. Actually, they're not young men. When they come, in, they're boys. And as they leave the troop, they're, they're really young men. If they're an eagle, that's great, but most scouts don't become eagles. They just are scouts. They still learn, and what do they learn? They learn, be prepared, a motto. Somehow you take your responsibility for yourself. If that's what they learned, that's great. I'd like to be a part of the learning process. I'm tough on them, but they know that somehow I got an arm that loves them. I'll push them in the, uh, in the right direction. I might give them a kick in the rear end, but I'm moving them forward. And it's not because I'm their parent. It's because I want them to do better for America. And the other thing is I miss the fathers. It's great to go on a camping trip and hear a father tell me something his kid did. I've heard that story 50,000 times, but it's always different because there's a new name to it. There's also another ingredient, and that is many of the fathers really don't believe that the kid is capable of surviving on his own, that he's capable of doing, being a leader, that he's capable of actually setting a goal. And I love to tell the father, look, get, just back off. Ask the kid if he set a goal. And, when he's, and ask him for a date, and if he has a date, say, son, did you make that date? Can I help you? You'd be amazed. The relationship will improve. And a lot of, uh, one year I had seven uh, uh, scouts out of 28 that, in fact, were single-parented families. And I was able to get the parent not living with the, uh, the scout, typically the father, to join us for activities. And that was a bonding relationship between the son and the father who was an absent father. In the case of mothers, mothers joined the committee if they were a single parent and family. And that was good for that relationship too. So I, I have a host of stories that are individual, but it, it boils down to I enjoyed my relationship with, with the families, I enjoyed my relationship with, with the parents. As of 2016, Richard Welbrock served as Scoutmaster for Troop 32 longer than any other Scoutmaster in the history of Troop 32, a total of 20 years. He earned Eagle Scout in 1952. He continued to guide the troop after stepping down as Scoutmaster, serving as Troop Committee Chairman from 2001 through the summer of 2011. 
He received the James E. West Fellowship Award, an endowment benefiting Patriots Path Council at Troop 32's 79th Annual Eagle Scout Court of Honor on February 10, 2016. His dedication and energy to Troop 32 has left a lasting legacy to live on for many years to come, and as an Eagle Scout himself, he has served as a role model and inspiration to all in Troop 32 and the community.